Good afternoon, everybody. It's Richard from B4. Uh, good afternoon. And if you could all um, come to life on your cameras, that would be great because Diane, our ringmaster this afternoon, would like to see you all, if that's okay. Um, hi, Alex. Hi, Tim. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Mari. Colin. Um, and I think we've got Nick Hughes as well uh, joining us. So um, good afternoon and, and welcome to Diane Wilkinson's uh, talk this afternoon. First in a series of, I think, six. Yes, Diane? That's right. Yes. Brilliant. So um, do you want to uh, introduce yourself, Diane? Uh, I will, yes. Diane Wilkinson and I have a business called Connected to Excellence. I specialise in teams. I lost all my work for the last three months and I've been working very hard putting things online. This is one of the websites There will be five that uh, Oh gosh, is that my mic? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's um, we're gonna be a feedback from you, Diane. Oh, it, it was it was Nick's mic. It's oh, it was Nick, was it? Okay, fine. No, you're fine, Diane. It's it's naughty Nick. Nick, what are you up to? He's 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 we've neutered him. <laughs> there he is. He's in Dalek mode. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, Tim, thanks for coming on, and Alex and Amanda, nice to meet you. Hi, Colin. Nice to see that your video is on today. Lovely to see you. And uh, Maury, we can't quite see you, but do let us know when you are ready to show, show us. So the, the way that I've been doing webinars is by interacting. So not, Richard asked me, said, Diane, how long is your presentation? And um, I said, 30 minutes. He went, no. I didn't say it that desperately. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the presentation, but then I will pause midway and ask you some questions. And if you want to put any questions, you're more than welcome to put up your hand like this, um, where we all in the chat box, if you want to. And um, so Mari, there's something about mid renovations. We don't mind what the house looks like or if children come in, that's absolutely fine. I don't think she wants to, Diane. <laughs> oh, okay, not a problem at all, yeah. Leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. At, and I just want to check with Richard. Richard, can you see my presenter view or you can see the slide? Uh, I can see presenter view. That's fine. Perfect. Yep. And now can you see presenter view or just one slide? We can see the slide. Thank you. So what I would like to ask is, do any of you recognize this beach? Hands up if you do. And I can't see everybody. Ah, oh, maybe I will be able to shortly. Yeah. Oh, South Africa? I don't know. So yeah, Tim, Tim, you're warm, very warm. Guess what? It is South Africa. Anybody got any ideas where specifically in South Africa? Well, the Cape of Good Horn or whatever, is it? No. Yeah, okay. Tim, that's getting very warm. So it's uh -huh. um, the Cape of Good Hope, and it's in the Cape yeah. Province, and it is a place called Plettenberg Bay, where I grew up. And this is where I learned about choices and an impact. Which and so what we're going to explore today is how can we lead ourselves in this whole change environment that we're in. And to me, it comes down to two things, is making good choices about the impact that we want to have on others. And this is where I learned it is through body surfing waves in Plettenberg Bay in South Africa. I wasn't privileged enough to go to ballet and all sorts of things that my daughter did in Oxford. But what I what my father taught me was how to body surf. And uh, the, the secret about making about body surfing was making good choices. And my dad would say to me, Diane, look at the curl of the wave. And if the curl is too big, he said, don't surf it because you will be dumped. And really the question was which wave to surf, the one that was curling with this huge curve, which is right for board surfers, but not for body surfers. 
So he taught me to put my arms alongside my body as we were catching the wave. And the secret was to actually catch a wave that had good energy, but was just curling in the right way. So that's where this all started. And so what are we going to cover today? We're going to look at this making a choice to have the impact that we want, firstly. And secondly, we're going to be exploring questions. As I said, we'll pause in the middle and we'll um, look at a question. And then at the end, please do all, uh, if you've got any questions, by all means, put your hand up and um, do ask. I'm very happy to stop and for us to chat about it. So what is this choice impact model? This is essentially and what it is and if you see the loop at the bottom, which is that feedback, uh, how, how it works is that in life we get feedback. So for, um, for example, my youngest son is 27 years old and um, some of the feedback that I don't enjoy getting from him is, mum, you are patronizing. And uh, that is an example that fits this absolutely and, and where this model has come from. It's, we can use it in our daily lives. Because my intention, if we look at the top loop, my intention is not to be patronizing. Yes, I'm a strong South African mother, I know that. But my impact, you know, he's now 27. I, I want to have an adult relationship with him. And actually the secret is, at times, I need to where that orange star is on the left. I need to make a choice that perhaps is out of my comfort zone to get the impact with him. So for example, what I know I, I need to do with Christopher is I need to slow down and talk with a softer voice. And, and also instead of saying, Christopher, you must, classic South African mother, uh, I say, Christopher, how about we go for cocktails at Joe's? is an, a real example. So again, this is very practical. It's, it's able to be used, but this is how it, uh, I've slowly developed it and how I've, I use it. So the, the essence is that actually when we receive negative feedback from people, we've got two choices, haven't we? And I don't know about you, but there are many times when I could just think, oh my goodness, it's them, or, or it's my son being grumpy again. Christopher is notorious for if he hasn't had enough to eat, he, he shows up rather grumpy in the family. Fortunately, he's got a gorgeous girlfriend who gives him a, um, a bit of a elbow and says, Christopher, you're not talking very nicely to your mother. I love her, by the way. So we he's could on the payroll. <laughs> he's he i'm delighted they're all on their own payrolls so um we could think that it's them and and this is the choice we've got or we can pause and think what is it that we can do differently and this is the essence of it so what i wondered is what if we pause now and think about some feedback that you've received that perhaps was slightly uncomfortable. You didn't get the energy you wanted. So I'm going to stop sharing now. And I'm going to ask, but Tim, what if we start with you? Ooh. I can't imagine <laughs> that Sam could ever unmute first, if you're on mute. Can you hear me? Sam, I can hear you, Tim. Sam wouldn't yeah. speak. My son has spoken to you, my, has spoken to me, I would imagine. So, yeah. Tim, think about what's some uncomfortable feedback you've perhaps well, had. Well, well, I remember just a short 12 months ago, I went for an interview to be the head of fundraising at Sobel House. Obviously, I didn't get the job, obviously, because I'm still not the head of fundraising at Sobel House. Yeah. But it, it, the lady, I went down to London to meet this high end recruitment person who yeah. gave me feedback that I didn't, I didn't come across passionate enough that I wanted the job which I was, a bit, I was a bit pissed off about, really. But we're, yeah. I am very passionate about I live and breathe what we do. Yes. But, but she was giving the feed, wasn't, didn't come across as if I wanted that particular job, not that I wasn't passionate about what we do, sure. if that makes sense. Uh, 
uh, Tim, it makes total sense. Be so, so what's fascinating there is the impact you wanted. We all know how passionate you are about So Bell House, and yeah. you've inspired loads of us to think about shall we? Uh, yeah. you, you, I, we still need to follow that up, but it, yeah. we know that. But what's interesting is, and my question, I'll leave you to ponder on. I'm going to ask um, somebody else: is what do you need to do differently that might be out of your comfort zone? So it yeah. might be the opposite to me. The, the, the Diane has to slow down and speak with a softer yeah. voice. So it's an interesting thing to ponder on here. Yeah. Sure. Nick, what if we go to Nick and, um, and then to Amanda? Nick, can you unmute yourself? And is there any uncomfortable feedback that you've perhaps received? And it could be from in work or it could be at home. Can you hear me okay? It's a bit muffly, Nick. I don't know. We've just got two other video conferences going on at home at the moment, so... Yeah, no, I think we'll probably have to park, Nick, and then go to either Alex or Amanda. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Nick. Amanda, do you want to unmute yourself, and is there perhaps something that... Um... Um, yeah, I'm thinking from um, a business development perspective, you know, where... I've been in a situation in the past, um, you know, in an old... Uh, previous life where we pitched for a you know really important piece of business and you know the you, you can practice for a long time with colleagues to deliver the most compelling pitch yeah. and then get the feedback you know that it may not have come across you know um I don't know as professional as it could have or something else and it really you know if you've been working on something for months and months it can oh destroys you you know and you just think oh god how am I going to get over this you know yes it's, it's awful feeling it is an awful feeling isn't it and and in that situation it's so easy Amanda is it not to kind of go mm, it's oh, there. What's the point yeah what's the point <laughs> and and um and then getting back to that place of where we can be curious about mm -hmm. so what is it that I need to do differently and I think this the the scary thing is about in this disrupted world we're living in now, um, we're getting lots of feedback and, um, and what do we need to do differently to be able to cope with the change. So shall we, let's move on and uh, we'll have time also again for us to explore more questions, but do... Um, Can we ask Alex? Because Alex might have been, looked like she was ready to ask a question then. Ah, Alex, do you want to... Shall we come to you at the end? I'll come to you to, the, at the end, Alex, okay? So, Poor Alex. Oh, we will come to her, her at the end. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fine. Okay. <laughs> so, Tim, um, the, the question that you were saying about, you know, you are passionate, but it, it makes us think, so what can we do? And what is it that we need to do differently having received that feedback and Amanda as you say it really makes us feel quite gutted at times and so that's why that um, that orange star is is in that place where I call it our sort of shadow self it's it's not in in the stuff that I, so I those who know me um, high energy and um, full of fun is that I need to do that slowing down and uh, and soften my voice so I do know that running and walking helps me to just slow down and to um, find that quieter Diane so let's look at this out of comfort zone because it's easy to say it and it when we're making this choice of the next behavior so we've got us who we are naturally and uh, and all of us are different. Some are perhaps um, louder and bubblier and others are, are quieter. So um, my Isabel, who works for me, my operations coordinator, she's very quiet and but boy works like a Trojan and very um, hard. And um, so we are very different in how we show up in the world. And so for each of us, our stretch zone is different. For me, it's about, um, as I said, that slowing down and softening. And for her, she was on one of the webinars I ran recently. And for her, her stretch zone was talking on a webinar. She didn't, she didn't, doesn't enjoy that. She prefers the background um, environment. 
but what I've also what I've added here that's valuable for us to look at because that that um, choice point is good if it's in our stretch zone. It's not good if it's in our panic zone. And for some of us, the panic zone is where the excitement is. But for others, it can be where fear lives. And, and then as, as a result of that, action is limited and fear can stop all action. So it's, it's what I find valuable is to, for us to know ourselves about where is our comfort zone, what is our own stretch, and, and what is our panic zone? Because we'll all have different levels of, of what this is. And particularly with this major disruption, uh, we may be in, some people may get to panic zone more quickly than others. And, and for me, it's about under knowing ourselves and knowing what we need to do to be able to stay in the stretch zone and not be in the panic zone. So another question I often get was, oh, I can't, I can't do that because how, how can I do that? I don't feel authentic. And what I encourage people to do is to actually deliberately practice and, and then to ask for feedback and just keep learning. So Tim, dare I be so brave as to when you go for your next interview, I'm very happy to offer you free interview uh, practice. How's that? Well, that sounds great because I think it's how I come over in an interview is probably what I perhaps came away from. Yes. I think that's what I came back with, probably. And I thought I'd done quite well as well. <laughs> so, so, irony of it. so Tim, that's the fascinating thing is that the impact you thought you had was not what, what they saw it as so therefore the feedback they gave was you weren't passionate enough which we know you are so it's about yeah, where but... you go to go into that stretch zone and it... now, i don't know what it is you need to do but we does, couldn't does, explore... it, does it also depend on who's giving you that feedback because i was given feedback by someone i've known an hour yes and that made that, that made receiving that feedback quite tough because I've, it wasn't anyone who worked with me Yes. Who, did, who, knew, who know I'm passionate. I was a bit, that's the bit I found a bit awkward, I suppose. But. Uh, Tim, absolutely. However, dare I be so bold as no. to say yes. that person you only knew for an hour was the decision maker. Yes, Tim's taking the job or no, Tim's not. I know. Am I right? And, and when people get to know you, we know you're passionate. But in an hour, you haven't got enough time to slowly build that relationship. Yeah. You've got to get high impact early on. So yes. and, and yeah. there's no, in this, the thing that, that's valuable in this model, there's no black and white. You must always do this and I must always do that. It's about each of us deliberately practicing something diff new and asking for feedback in sure. by. And Tim, I often say to people, find somebody that you trust that you know is going to give you and, and I was asked for two bits of feedback. I say, ask, what am I doing well? And what can I improve? Sure. And, and that then helps the continuous learning. Because sure. Brandon, that's a lovely example of you thought you had the impact and you thought it went well. So it's, it's classic. Yeah. Can I just add, add a comment there, Diane? It's also quite a dangerous thing for you to be criticised of because obviously you'll know who got the job and by virtue, it, and, and, and that in itself the, was quite more, tricky more, pa I've, more passionate because I've got a new colleague now who, in a way it's great how we've actually worked through things really and it's been really positive yeah. now but it was a bit tricky and it's still tricky actually with the CEO actually who I feel sent me on this interview I would have liked a bit more having been it's, it's a bit awkward it's an internal candidate it's always a bit awkward mm -hmm. and it's sort of but it, it's also like, tricky isn't it because you don't know what the impact is that they want so, no, I know, I know. so you could have had a different person interviewing you who actually thought, well, you know, if you are going to be someone out front, you know, me personally, I don't like someone who, you know, if I, if, if I sort of want to give to charity, it's because I want to give to charity, not because perhaps someone's, you know, really forceful or really bubbly or really, yeah. you know, on yeah. it. And then you might have come across like that. So when you don't, you don't always, you know, it's tricky because the next time you have this situation, they might want exactly what you did in the last one. Yeah. 
Mm. Yes. And, yeah. and Alex, absolutely. And that's why this model is about us experimenting because when we don't get the impact and we kind of go, Ugh, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's just kind of going, hang on, let me be curious about what is it that I need to do. And that's the essence of this, of this model. So, and that's what I, why I developed it because uh, the other thing I will um, be honest with you is my first 10, I've lived in the UK for 33 years. My first 10 years, my British friends, professionally and colleagues and, and friends in my book club would say, Diane, you are being blunt. Now, I had no intention of being blunt, but guess what? I was just being my South African me. And, and it's take, do you know what? That's where this model also came from, from body surfing and being told I'm blunt. And it's, it's been me experimenting about how to do that, slowing down and talking with a soft voice. It's a lifetime's journey. It's not, um, it's not just some, you know, this kind of stuff is, is actually quite deep, but it, on the surface, we can practice and, and um, get it to, we can have a different impact, but we may be in our stretch zone. And then the other thing people have said to me, well, I don't feel authentic when I'm in my stretch zone and doing things differently. And for me, the crux is, and it comes back to, to Alex, what you were saying about uh, the impact that you want. And my point that I make here is, are we going to go for impact or are we going to stay in our comfort zone? And that's the hard choice that we need to make. And, and again, every situation is different. We can only make that choice for ourselves about am I going for impact or am I going for, to stay in my comfort zone? And, and when we are in a disrupted time like this, it is not always good to go for impact. We actually need to do a lot of um, being aware of are we in our comfort zone, our stretch zone, or our panic zone. So I sum up with it's all about us making choices. Thank you for sharing your examples. And are there any, um, so these are the two that we have covered, making that choice using the choice impact model. So let's see now if anybody has got any questions and I will stop sharing. Says me. Any questions? Um, Amanda, not yeah. a question as, as such, but more of a, a comment which relates perfectly back to the example that I gave earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, your, um, I made some points about um, the pack the practice, the feedback and the continuous learning, yes. uh, which was really important um, message in there because what, what I learned from uh, the piece of the business development pitch that we made is um, the team, we hired a professional pitch coach. So what we did is we, we got them to practice the skills with us who gave us that feedback as well. So they were independent, but we trusted them as well because they were, uh, independent and they were you know very good in terms of how they fed back as well so it didn't crush your confidence but it gave you things to improve um, um, that continuous learning one of the things that we did was around every time that we went to do a pitch we yeah. would have lots of um, rehearsals and we stopped calling them fever pitch which got everybody just the word fever sent you into a fever panic um, to get rehearsals um, where you could start to really understand who the potential audience might be. So understanding that who's going to be interviewing you um, yes. really helped to start researching and doing more in a much more professional way um, than we had done previously. So we learned a lot and it just, it just triggered in my thought from you, from going from that panic of, oh my God, we've got to deliver a pitch to we've got this, we're okay. You know, we can, we might win some, we might lose some, but it felt much more stretching rather than panic all of the right. time. So Amanda, I'm curious, has that, have you been able to learn, use what you learned in, a, in another situation or in other pictures, I wonder? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So by going through that, yeah. 
you never want to go through that again <laughs> you know so yeah, it, absolutely. and that's the point was we could have gone into the there's no point in doing this forget it let's just you know let's not bother again because it was just awful experience um to actually let's sit back get some reflection get some professional um a pitch coach that would come and work with us as a team but also as individuals um give us the feedback and keep learning and improving so after we do a pitch even if we won some work it would say so what did we do uh, what did we do? and that's even looking at the good things um what can we build on yeah fabulous brilliant any other questions or comments just comments uh, was that was that useful to you could could you see that you could use it Ben, did you have something were you stretching i was stretching but i was nervous was an observation really but I, I, I did learn a lot from from the um the feedback and it's also trying to be um honest enough to, of yourself to receive the feedback as well isn't it? Oh. Tim, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and and to plan i think i learned also to to plan more ahead thinking to think more about it before i do it rather than just go and do it mm -hmm. oh so that's interesting are you good at um are you able to just do that without too much planning well obviously not i don't think really <laughs> <laughs> okay. the, the, you know I, I've, I look back at quite a few jobs i've applied for and have come out really well and, and what comes over is they say no we really thought you know, aspire was another job i went for and um uh, Oxley's littered of charities that I have applied for jobs. <laughs> so this whole house that have me, but um, I've come over, and the, and the, the feedback I always get, you know, you come over really, you seem come over really nice. That bit, I get that bit, but it's the, but we found a better, <laughs> found a better candidate at doing the job. So I'm probably not as good at articulating right. what I need to do to do the job. Yeah. If you just employ, if you want to employ someone as a nice chap, I'd get the job every time. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit like the pitching, Tim, isn't it? You're not pitching a, a product as such, but you're pitching yourself, isn't it? It's yeah. a principle. Yes. Yeah. It's, not, it's, most, it's not in most people's natures to kind of, unless you're Trump, I suppose, uh, <laughs> tell your, you know, I'm really good at this and I'm great at that. So it, 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 most people just, you know, not like that. And, yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously, you said your CEO put you forward to go through it, so he obviously thought you were capable of doing. She, when she didn't, you didn't discourage me. But I, I th yeah, anyway, I don't want to sort of go down that. I, th I think I probably assumed more. I think it was a three-stage interview, and I thought at least I'd get a second interview to talk to my peers. That's the bit I suppose that I, I, I probably didn't go in into it enough of thought into it. I didn't think I'm just going to go to London and then they'll just knock me on to the next one. But it did sort of think I did think that that would happen. So it's probably. My expectations were probably okay. different. Yeah, interesting. But anyway, so would anybody Diane, like... we, we've got uh, Nixon there. He's disabled his camera, so he's going to try um, audio. Oh, right. Okay. No, it's still the same, Nick. I'm afraid. Yeah. Do you, do you want to put it on? A, if you've got something, do you want to put it in a, in the chat, and I'll ask on your behalf. So while we're waiting for Nick. Um, question. Uh, what I'd love to hear in two or three words, what's your takeaway from today? So Tim, if I come to you first, and then Amanda, Bless you, Alexandra. and then Alex. <laughs> yeah, well, I think what I've learned a little bit is in, in we need to invest in each in ourselves about how we how we are. And I don't always think we do where I work. We do a little bit, but we need to do more. There's a need to, to invest in each other. Yeah. And, um, and Amanda, if I come to you now, do you want to unmute? And then Alex, I'll come to you. Just two, three words. What have you, what struck you about this today? I think I like the, the one of your final statements, which was, are we going to go for impact or stay in our comfort zone? Mm. Mm. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, tough, tough question, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Alex, what for you? Um, well, I think um, maybe from the other angle of me leading other people, it's yeah. going to be great because um for them when they're talking to me because they might not be coming across how they intended to come across or yes. um you know so from that angle as well it'd be mm -hmm. good to think about it absolutely and this can be used in both of those scenarios just um and actually it's a it's a lovely um way of being able to then give feedback in a non-judgmental way 
And uh, I call it giving feedback with dignity, just to be able to say that. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. So, um, Nick. Just add some feedback from Nick. Yeah. Nick's experienced a model similar to yours, um, and it was a game changer in how to manage people, situations, and re receive feedback. So, um, very much in, in tune with what you're, you're um, talking about here, Diane. So, Richard, I'm going to ask you what. Oh, what, bloody hell. In three words, Richard. I've just been managing all the chat, I've not really been paying attention. <laughs> um, it's, it's okay to go outside of your comfort zone. Uh huh. Fabulous. So, Richard, over to you. Well, you want me to expand on that or to close? No, <laughs> no thank you, Diane. That's really, really, uh, really Thanks, good. Diane. Obviously, everybody found it very engaging and, and worthwhile. So thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, thank you, Diane, again. We, we've got you again on Thursday, where you're going to be talking about... So I've got a series in uh, regarding resilience and um, on Thursday and then again next Monday at 2 o'clock. So Thursday is 12 o'clock. Mondays two o'clock and then uh, each Monday I will be on B4. So um, Richard, I want to say uh, a huge thank you to what I said this before we were live. I do think B4 have been amazing in getting the um, getting these going and enabling us to take part, whether we are audience or whether we like me presenting and um, doing the regular. And I'm working on Richard to do a regular Friday afternoon. And Tim, I'm going for the gin this Friday. Right. I, I see. No, we are doing it regularly. It's just we changed it to four and caught Tim out. Of, five. You know, the, so yeah. by the way, uh, last Friday there were some beers. I'm not a beer drinker. I wasn't excited about the beers, but I'm very excited about the gin. I'm going, I'm introducing myself only because you're doing that, Tim. So thank you. All right. So thanks, right. everybody. Um, I'll be there. Thanks, Diane. And we've, we went to Plettenberg Bay 20 years ago. My wife, I, I thought we had, my wife just told me, so. Oh my goodness, how oh, fabulous. Did she remind minute. you that's where you proposed as well, Tim? No, that's Stratford Avon's where we proposed. <laughs> that's the year before, but yeah. Okay. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Um, do you want to know more about uh, working with teams? Thanks, Dan. Take care. Thanks a lot. Take care, everybody.